You're listening to Find Your Film After Dark with Bruce Perky and Eric Holmes. Greg's not in right now because he likes to go to sleep early, get his beauty rest, and so we can look good for all you listeners out there and find your film land. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I, I guess that's a good start as any. <laughs> Eric and I are here uh, to talk about a new movie. Uh, we thought that every so often we're going to do um, some extra content for you guys. So, between our normal shows, and our uh, once a month stints on uh, cinematics, we will uh, either individually or in groups of two or even three, maybe, you never know, uh, do uh, reviews of things that are not part of the main show. And today I had considered doing The Sadness, which just dropped on Shudder on May 12th, I believe. Today is Friday the 13th of May. And uh, Eric said, oh, I'll watch it. I'll hop on too. So I said, cool. Why are we talking about the sadness? Well, the sadness. Oh, wait, hang on. What's going on over there, Eric? Oh, I'm just getting it. I'm just getting a quick drink. Why, what's what is up? that fabulous glass that you're drinking out of there? Oh, this this thing. Oh, well, this is a, a nice finder film uh, pint glass uh, that you can get at finderfilmpodcast.com at our merch store. Ding. <laughs> we need a little ding sound in there. Um, that wasn't anyway. planned at all, by the way. That was completely <laughs> off the cuff. <laughs> so the sadness uh, for people, especially in the horror world, maybe not in your normal cinematic world, but if you're in the horror world, uh, the sadness is getting all kinds of buzz. You're hearing all kinds of crazy things. Uh, you know, it's the most extreme horror ever. The most disturbing horror you'll ever see. Uh you know, you're getting a lot of controversy around the director, a lot of controversy around the movie. It's going to be so violent that you can't handle it. Who knows? Even the little blurbs they show on the posters and promo stuff are saying things like, you know, how extreme and how crazy it is. So obviously, when you get things like that, uh, it's going to probably cause some controversy or at least some conversation. So we thought, let's jump in and see what we think about the sadness. So why don't you eric give us the basic synopsis like what is the basic setup of the sadness i'm trying to think of uh similar to i guess the compared to the opening of uh maybe Shaun of the dead or uh quiet place part two where you know people just having regular day and just little by little in the background things start going start going crazy until everything starts going nuts and then from there on it's just uh it is of course basically a zombie movie the zombies in this are a little different than zombies i guess you've seen in other movies uh they're fast like you know in the in the zack snyder dawn the dead or the uh, 28 days later but also the zombies are intelligent they don't they haven't lost their mental faculties in the sense that they don't go around oh, brains are not mindless they they're intelligent and they're almost hunters. Like they, they, uh, there's one in particular that, you know, is hunting down one of the characters and not only are they after blood, but they, they well, do I, their worst Im impulses. They, yeah. uh, they let those out of whether it be, uh, killing people at times, raping people. So they're not just out to kill. They're out to do the worst possible thing that a human could think of in that moment. And I think that that's, that's kind of one of the main differences, too, I saw, too, is that, um, well, most zombie movies, the zombie has died and then reanimated and comes after you in whatever way that zombie comes after you. And this one, it's like, I don't think the zombies in per se actually have died, but it's like a virus. And obviously pandemic, there's some pandemic stuff in here. There's a virus that causes, I think in some ways I thought of it kind of like 28 Days Later like the rage yeah. virus, right? Yeah. So I think it kind of is similar in some ways to that, except this one is specifically... It's like a supposed depraved to, virus. Yeah, it's like supposed to make people act on their most depraved thoughts. And like if, and they actually... It's sadistic, torturous, and especially like sexual. That's like a big part of it too. And it seems like... Oh, and there's something about how they enjoy their zombiness more if they're going after like a normal yeah. person which is kind of a weird thing too. Uh, and then the basic plot, which we didn't get into at all, is that it starts out with a, just a normal young couple. Like you said, it's a normal day. And I like that stuff the best. I like that stuff in zombie movies where it's like the normal world slowly starts to crumble around them and you get to see it. In, you're, you're kind of in on it before they are because obviously you're watching a zombie movie. Yeah. And uh, this young couple like 
they depart for the day and the young man says goodbye to the young woman. She goes off on the train, off to her job, you would assume. And then he's kind of running, riding off on his scooter and very quickly uh, discovers that, you know, society is kind of breaking down and he is like trying to get back to her. So it's like the whole point of the movie is basically, will they or won't they get back together before one of them has died or turned into a zombie or whatever. And that's, that's essentially it, right? I mean, there's not much more to that than that. No, it's, it's, uh, yeah, there's, there's, um, you know, commentary on how the, just politics in general and how uh, politics kind of messed up the, uh, the whole pandemic. Um, I'm guessing, uh, I believe the filmmaker is Canadian, but yeah, the interview I heard from him sounded like he lived in Taiwan, maybe. Um, I don't know if that's the case or you just spent a lot of time there maybe. Yeah. And that's been some of the, I guess we can kind of get in a little to the, the controversy. Well, first of all, let's talk about the extremity, extremeness of it. Uh, to me, other than maybe the sexual aspect of it, which is kind of weird to kind of throw in there. I mean, to me, I mean, I've seen lots of gory movies. This, I think gore wise, it's, it's pretty violent, but I didn't find it to be unwatchable. Like, it, yeah. I mean, it's it's on the more violent side. I, I actually admired that that a lot of it seems to be practical effects. I like that. Yeah, it's, it's there's definitely like buckets of blood. Yeah, the, I, I got I got kind of that usually. So when we review movies, uh, newer ones, we usually get screeners. So a lot of times we'll watch movies before other people. So a lot of times we don't get preconceived notions of what a movie's supposed to be before we watch it. And that, that's not the case here. Like, uh, you know, Andrew uh, from Andrew watches movies. He's seen it. Uh, I believe William Lindis has seen it from movie bears podcast. And well, that's, that's not saying much. William Lindis also watches movies like usually a year or two before they even come out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we got, we got some uh, kind of, buzz i guess or you know hearing stuff from the ether of, about this movie and what i heard was um oh this is like one of the most uh one of the most gruesome blah 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 right. depraved movies and i'm watching it going i mean it, it's certainly bloody it's definitely gory and for a lot of people that's not gonna be their bag uh if you watch watch horror movies this is not a serbian film <laughs> no no this is not solo you know because that that's depravity in a different way certainly not cannibal holocaust at least i hope it's not <laughs> because uh right but it's uh i i think it's i think it's pretty decent pretty decent zombie movie even though they're not zombies but i mean i i, I think uh calling them zombies is a good uh shorthand I guess probably the best shorthand I can come up with at the moment because I don't know that they came up with the name for what to call the sick people. No, I didn't hear anything either. And I, I think the average person, if you said, what is this movie? They're going to say it's a zombie movie. I mean, that's the average person is yeah. just going to say that. And and it's, it doesn't really but, matter. Like it kind of that Also, category. that's like, that's also like uh, with Paul Thomas Anderson is like, I made a, a horror movie there will be blood i'm like yeah, yeah but when no. you say that people have a preconceived notion of what that is so it doesn't describe it very well this is so definitely like, oh, zombie adjacent how's that <laughs> yeah like zombie adjacent for sure but yeah it's it's it's, it's a pretty good definitely uh once the once the violence starts it doesn't really let up much like is is kind of uh action movie but how action movies like they have the setup and once the car chases and explosions stop they just kind of keep going this is kind of like that but in a horror setting is once the shit hits the fan it doesn't i just got a couple of small moments where they kind of take a breather but for the most part it just goes goes pretty full bore all the way through yeah i would agree i, I the thing that kind of threw us off or threw me off it definitely was and like you said we don't usually get like a preconceived notion unless it's a huge movie that everyone's been waiting yeah. for and even then like, like top gun maverick yeah yeah <laughs> where i like, put it for example like men i'm really interested in seeing men it's by the guy who made annihilation and all this kind of stuff i have expectations because of the director but i don't really have expectations for the story itself you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't really know if it's going to be good or bad. I just hope it will be good because I like that director. But this one had the uh, weird, um, the weird aspect for me, which was both Andrew Martin and William Lindis both had pretty negative thoughts about this. And those are two people. When those people yeah. both agree in uh, agree in a negative way to me, that that gets my attention too. You know, I, it makes me like, hmm, what is this movie? And I guess this is to me the thing that I would like the least about this movie. Well, first of all, it's kind of basic. 
it isn't really like it doesn't really go to the higher echelons of zombie so my adding this to zombie movie this isn't like an upper echelon zombie movie for me it doesn't kind of go over the next step it's just kind of like you said it's like a pretty good gory violent yeah. action zombie movie but it's not like one of my favorite zombie movies ever kind of a thing. Yeah. The negative aspects to me, a lot of them have come from the director, which is kind of, I'm always like, is that fair? Or isn't that not fair to like push the director's attitudes yeah. towards what, it? What, what do you think of uh, Francis Ford Coppola movies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not like he sued a uh, victim of uh, <laughs> yep. sexual abuse or anything. But, right. Well, know. and that kind of gets to the point of this. So I guess the one thing that I, that I kind of does bug me about this movie, and that is, so we talked about the, the the disturbing Hallmark movies, right? Like uh, yeah. Serbian film, Sallow, Irreversible, all these kind of movies. And all of these movies also have aspects of sexual assault, rape, those kind of things that really push the boundaries. Yeah. And to one degree or other, they all deal with it. Like whether you think that they deal with it in an effective way is kind of up for debate. And some people might consider them exploitation. Some people might consider them you know, good and, and important. I, I would say Irreversible probably does, tries to do something pretty important if, if you like it or not. This movie, I think the problem a lot of people have with it, and I kind of agree with it to some degree, is that it's used in a really cynical way. It's used as just another scary plot device. Like yeah. people are just, yeah, getting, you know what I mean? Like people are just getting ass that. assaulted and it's just like, hey, isn't that scary and terrible? Cool. Uh, yeah. it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like cool. And I think that's what's got people bothered who are like into horror movies and stuff. Because when the guy, the director talks, he kind of talks like that too. Like, yeah, I thought, hmm, what would be cool? What would be, what would be scary? Cool. He kind of is very flip about it. And it's not the kind of thing you're going to throw in a movie and be really flip about, especially when your tone is supposed to be like shocking and, and, but kind of a thrill ride. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, I, I kind of had a different take on that just because going in, I, you know heard heard things about it and a lot of other than the uh blood they cut away a lot a lot mm -hmm. of the a lot of the rape violence is implied uh, i don't know how much we want to do uh uh but uh, yeah no we won't <laughs> there, there, there's a scene yeah where uh uh he says he's going to do something and it's happening off screen and then yeah. they cut away to the someone's uh reaction of what's going on there's a character that says things that he did that were really depraved but you never really see any of that it's almost like a you know instead of a french extreme horror it's french extreme exhibition <laughs> or <laughs> exposition yeah. and this probably flies in the face of uh maybe what people are complaining about i kind of wish they would have kind of leaned in on that like if that's the movie you're going to make if you're going to make the shock movie then do it you know go all out this is not probably not going to be a uh, popular thing but it, if you're going to kill a puppy kill a puppy if you're not, you know, don't talk about killing the puppy and do it off screen. Like if, if this is what, if this is what you're going for, then go for it. Yeah. It, and it, it was, it was kind of weird. It, it was to, almost like a depravity light. <laughs> yeah. To your point. Yes. I, I kind of get what you're getting at there. And there is a scene that's the equivalent of killing a puppy that's done off screen towards the end of this movie. If you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. No actual puppy killing that. Yeah. I remember. No, maybe there is. I don't think so. <laughs> that, I no. mean, there was a lot of there was a lot of things dying, yeah. so maybe there was. So I think that actually what you're getting at is kind of the thing that bothers me about this movie, and I think might, in a roundabout way, be bothering other people about this movie, and that is, it kind of wants to have a cake and eat it too. <laughs> That's a terrible analogy, but <laughs> yeah, because it's eat your cake and have it too. Yeah, <laughs> you can't do both. Once you eat the cake, you can't have it. It's gone. But it kind of but wants if you to like, have a cake, you can eat it. It's it kind of wants to be depraved and not show it to you because it almost doesn't want to deal with the idea of like, well, actually deal with the idea of that, right? Like either you're going to show this horrible, horrible thing and then it actually makes you question even more like, why is that horrible, horrible thing in this like, quote, fun, scary movie? And in a sense, that kind of accent accentuates the problem I have in a way that like they want to just kind of use it as a cheap effect but they don't really want to under like, like, what is it there for? For, for example, would be, we're not going to talk about what the scene is, but there, there's going to obviously be a really notorious scene in the middle of this movie. What happens to a girl 
who earlier lost her eye. We'll yeah. just say we'll just say that. And I think we agree that's probably going to be one of the most notorious scenes in this movie. What's the point of that though, other than just to be a gross thing that happens? Like, well, I mean, with the, within the context of the movie, the whole thing is that they work on their worst impulses, right? But yeah, the, the um, so but it, you kind of, I kind of I mean what I mean is like usually movies like this when they do that, they're kind of trying to make some sort of point, like. Perfect example would be yeah. the, the obvious example is George Romero, right? Night of the Living Dead is about one sort of set of things, and Dawn of the Dead is about another sort of set of things. Sure, they're really gory, and people consider them depraved movies, and they have lots of gags, like gore gags. Yeah, but they all they all have some kind of point, whether you think it is effective or not. They have a point. I don't know what the point of this movie is. That that I couldn't tell you. And I think that's the problem I, when you use maybe the stuff, there, but maybe you don't have some... a point. Then it's exploitation. I think that's. the kind of the thing people are wondering about this movie yeah and maybe it's uh maybe it's a comment on during the pandemic uh people treated the pandemic with the worst impulses maybe it's something like that maybe um which which works you know to, as far as uh as a horror movie goes because one of the things i was going to kind of knock it for but now that i'm thinking of it in that terms maybe not because i don't want to sound like i want to see rape i don't but no i understand if the, if, i don't think you're saying movie, that <laughs> But no the, the whole thing is, if that's the kind of move you're going to make, lean into that. It, when you cut away from something, it's usually because I want to give the audience the feeling of this horrible thing that's happening. We don't need to see it because we're not that kind of movie, but we're going to comment on it. So it needs to be part of the movie. Maybe it can happen off screen. And th- it didn't feel like there was commentary on it no. until I just said the thing I just said like 15 seconds ago. So maybe there is. Maybe, um, but yeah, I think it's pretty vague if it is there i think that that would be kind of the biggest the biggest kind of knock on this movie is that what we're talking about is it's a lot of people and i think i might fall in that camp it feels kind of like like a cheap a cheap horror kind of like we were just talking about with animals being hurt like just using it in a cheap way as opposed to actually making part of the story and when it's used in a cheap way it's kind of lame and it's kind of that way in here i mean you could say violence is the same thing but violence is like become so (laughs) commodified unfortunately it is kind of a cheap way so i guess the final thing would be like what would you say would you say it's a four star three star five star um this is this is just kind of depends on on uh what what you're into uh, for me, as a zombie movie, it's probably three and a half, four star. I had fun with it, except for the, you know, the scenes that weren't. So I think the scenes that weren't supposed to be fun were very clearly like this. Uh, you're supposed to be turned off by this. So I don't think uh, I didn't get the sense that the the filmmaker was like, look, isn't rape awesome? Like it, I right. got the I got the sense that the filmmaker was like, yeah, this is probably something you're probably going to look away from. And then even he does because they don't they don't show anything. This is the more I'm talking about. This is kind of a weird a weird a, version of this thing, sort of thing. It, it's weird, right? Because it, it's too depraved for a fun bloody horror movie, but it's not it's not depraved enough for a shock horror movie. So it's kind of it, it, it's riding this weird line. And I keep getting the impression that this guy doesn't really know what he's trying to say with the movie. I think that's the problem. Maybe. Yeah. That might be I, the problem. I, I, I could, I could see, I don't know if that's the case, but I could see that because like, I, I was going to say this, is, this could be a movie where you get a bunch of like uh, friends together and, you know, drink beers and watch it. But then there's scenes where it's like, yeah, the, the, let's watch cemetery man instead <laughs> yeah Let, let's watch uh night of the living dead let's watch yeah. uh return of the living dead and we won't go on a whole lot longer but yeah like there's a for early scene like you said with early scenes where things are starting to unravel like there's a scene in this restaurant where everything goes haywire like really early on right you know what i'm talking about where he goes in and there's that 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 old lady walks in or whatever yeah and all hell breaks loose that kind of stuff is the kind of thing you could all be having a party and going like, oh my God, it's getting crazy, you know? And if it all stayed at that level, I think I would like it a lot more. You know what this movie's good for? And I don't think that this is what they had in mind, but this movie would be perfect for that. You get all your friends together, um, some that you might be suspect of, and, and you're like, hey, we're going we're gonna to a uh, we're going to watch a horror movie. And uh, it's called The Sadness. And it's like, oh, I don't want to watch it. Oh, no, it, it, it's horror. It, there's lots of blood. We'll, we'll watch it. And they start, uh, when certain scenes come, like, you know, the you know the bloody scenes happen, blah, blah, blah. Zombies running around. Everyone's having a good time. 
And then like the certain scenes that we won't talk about, uh, but you'll know it when you see it. Look, look at your friend and see if you got a, a Harvey Weinstein among you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, this is this it, is a litmus yeah, test. Exactly. But don't say anything. Don't say anything. Just do it. And then just, yeah, look over at, uh, look over at James and see what he's, uh, oh, he's, his pants are moving. I don't know if I want to hang he's out. He's not right passing the HW test. We call this the HW test. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Harvey's getting a little too excited about this scene. Um, hey, what'd you think of the movie? Dude, that one scene was awesome. Yeah. We're not inviting you. Nope. <laughs> I think you have actually cracked the code. You've given this the most value that it can possibly have. Um, <laughs> I will say I would probably rate this about a three star. Um, but I I just feel something feels a little icky about it for me. So I'm dropping it a little bit. I, I, I would say if it was just on the effects and technical team, I'd probably give it four to five stars. I think it's it's pretty awesome. And I yeah. really appreciate the, the the creativity and gore and the 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 stuff they're putting into this movie, but uh, the direction itself and the writing kind of really cuts it way back down to me. So I'm probably two stars where I would normally be probably about three stars. I think the, the average horror fan will probably be somewhere in the three star range. Some, and and if your friends give it five HW (laughs) test, (laughs) five stars, I'll give it five (laughs) HW test. No, that, that, it, and by the way, it's not. It, if you like the movie, that you're not a creep, but it, it's no, the no, uh, it's the person that's looking at like. <sighs> and then I had. <sighs> this is what we need you, to be on VHS. You because... just gotta you gotta judge their breathing and how I wide their eyes get and how. <laughs> how big their smile, smile gets. gets. This um, is where we need to have it on VHS, so we can see if the tape's all messed up in that spot because it's been <laughs> it's been paused too much. Why is it? Why is this? Why is the picture getting all fuzzy, right? Yeah, why it's getting right fuzzy here, in this one section? Of all places. Yeah, it's really weird. You rewind this part a couple times? <laughs> yeah, you've been pausing it um, a whole bunch here? Yeah, I, th- I think, yeah, I'd, I'd probably go three and a half. Because this, this is, uh, you know, someone would put it on, I'd watch it again. But I, I don't know that there's enough meat on the bone. Yeah. Uh, but who knows? Like, this, first... this could be... This could be one like you know because we're so we're still in the pandemic, really. This could be like a movie. Maybe we'll watch it like ten years from now, and then maybe the you know how like some movies like after some time goes by, yeah, it starts to reveal itself more. Maybe it's one of those. I don't didn't see too much of that, but you know you never know. For me, that, I would like to love to watch the first. I like I like to watch the part till the guy drives out of kind of rise out of the city and the, where the woman gets off the train. That those points in the movie are kind of yeah. the sweet spots for me, and after that, it's all kind of diminishing returns. Yeah, I I, I would also say that if uh, you're going into this like, oh, this is going to be the most depraved thing I've ever seen, um, and wow. you haven't seen a Serbian film, you haven't seen Solo, you haven't seen Human Centipede, you haven't seen Campbell Holocaust or Ferox, this is not going to be up there. But like if all you've seen is like uh, Halloween or Nightmare on Elm Street, this is going to be like, holy shit, what the hell is this movie? So I, I guess it all depends on where you're coming from. This is And also, be... also, if you're uh, if you, you know, trigger warning, it, it's very heavy on the uh, sexual aspects of it, because that's kind of what. But it doesn't it doesn't show anything, really. I think there's one scene where there's a orgy of some sort, but that's all kind of consensual i i guess <laughs> not to give away <laughs> too much um, ew, ew. <laughs> yeah you know what maybe i will watch this one again <laughs> guys don't invite me over to watch this with you i will fail the test <laughs> when he gets a zombie orange i'll be like eh, and then what <laughs> yes exactly all right well Is i that, think was that a spoiler did I, did nah, I nah, right. nah, we're good. Anyway. <laughs> light, light spoilers. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, hopefully that you guys enjoyed this. It gives you something else to listen to from Find Your Film. If not, uh, go and find our full episodes where we have the awesome Greg. Don't forget to go to findyourfilmpod.com. Did I get that right? Findyourfilmpodcast.com. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Findyourfilmpod.com is a whole different thing. You don't want to go there. You're going to end up in the sadness yeah. for real. Uh, yeah. Findyourfilmpodcast.com and buy our merch. There is a special shirt with my face on it. If anyone actually buys that, I will be, I <laughs> no want one, to see someone actually wearing that shirt. That would be amazing. If someone buys it, it's probably going to be me. <laughs> it's like hey, someone I'm, bought it. I'm like, I don't know. 
don't know who it was. <laughs> I'm okay with that too. Anyway, uh, let us know what you thought of the sadness. Uh, if you have Shudder, which a fair amount of you guys out there do, um, I'm expecting some of you are going to see it. Are we off base? Are you in the HW camp? Are you in the Eric camp? Are you in the my camp? Where are you guys yeah. following this? Or or, may, or maybe you're in the Andrew Martin camp. I haven't, because I just watched it, so I haven't listened to Andrew Martin. Andrew watches movies yet. I haven't listened to that episode, but I know he has one. And he usually has pretty strong opinions on things. So um, I'm looking forward to listening to that, seeing what he thinks on it. And I would, maybe listen to that and maybe agree with him. I would highly advise checking that out. I know that uh, behind the scenes, he and I have been talking quite a bit about this movie and we've had some thoughts. Oh, I had one last thought and I'll leave with this. I thought the director of this movie, have you seen what he looks like? Yeah, I he kind of looks like Bald Bryan a little bit. I think he's the love child of Eli Roth and Bald Bryan. Oh, what a glorious baby that is. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>